A lot of looming questions about what could come next after Iran's revenge operation. Our Tiffany Huerta spoke with a local political science professor to get a better understanding of the relationship between the U.S. and Iran. This is not World War III. Um, it's not happening. John Taylor it's teaches Iran. foreign policy analysis at UTSA and has been keeping a close eye on the U.S. and Iran situation. He says tensions have been building for years. The 1979 uh, Iranian Islamic Re Revolution and the overthrow of the Shah. Um, 1979 as well, the hostage situation, which lasted 444 days. Uh, tensions in the Gulf and in, in, in the Middle East from the 1970s and 80s until the present. Um, basically, we fought what you might call a, a 40 year plus low level, low intensity war. In May 2018, President Donald Trump withdrew the U.S. from the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. The agreement offered Iran sanctioned relief in exchange for limits to its nuclear program. President Trump called it a one sided transaction that wasn't working for the U.S. and imposed sanctions on Iran, crippling its economy. I get what Trump was doing. However, if you're going to try to prevent Iran from getting the bomb, you might want to actually stay on the, stay in, stay in the negotiating room and stay at the table. We didn't do that. Since those sanctions, Iran has been, as some would call it, acting out, increasing its attacks. Just last month, there were Iranian-backed terrorist attacks on the U.S. Embassy in Iraq. On Thursday, President Donald Trump ordered a drone strike that killed a top Iranian general and other officials. The Trump administration said it killed General Qasem Soleimani because he was planning new attacks against the U.S. As the head of the Quds Force, Soleimani was personally responsible for some of the absolutely worst atrocities. He viciously wounded and murdered thousands of U.S. troops, including the planting of roadside bombs that maim and dismember their victims. Thousands of people filled the streets in Iran for Soleimani's funeral procession. Taylor says while some idolize Soleimani because of his success expanding upon Iran's regional goals. Some of fact have suggested that it was possibly his own people who might have tipped off the Americans and the Iraqis about what were, uh, the, the movements of, of the general um, and that this actually was not just related to international politics, but to Iranian domestic politics. Iran retaliated with missile attacks on two American military sites in Iraq yesterday. If you listen to the Iranian foreign minister, um, he talks about he's following under the UN charter regarding use of force. Um, it was, it, you might call it a tit for tat, for want of a better term. Um, and it's fascinating because it was not designed to do major damage. Taylor says this doesn't mean fight between Iran and the U.S. is over. I would not be surprised to see some sort of, of retaliatory action against a high-ranking American asset at some point in the future at, at the Iranians choosing. While President Trump said he will be imposing new sanctions on Iran, he also offered an olive branch. The United States is ready to embrace peace with all who seek it. Iran said it is not seeking escalation or a war, but did say it will respond to any aggression. President Trump said today he's going to ask NATO to become much more involved in the Middle East. Myra.